Welcome to a new lab update. It's a very quick one today. What we've got here is um, a CAN based web interface for the inverter. And I will show you what I mean in a second. So what we have here is <coughs> the classic uh, configuration solution. This is a Tesla uh, large drive unit logic board. And it's got an ESP32 solid onto it and it lets you connect via Wi-Fi and modify the parameters. Trouble is, um, if this is actually mounted in, inside the inverter, um, the inverter casing is designed to not let any high frequency components out and so it also, well it doesn't block the Wi-Fi but it makes it very hard to use and many people complain about that, rightly so. So what we've come up with now, this is the very first version 3 mainboard here and it's got its own Wi-Fi module, but that's just for demonstration. What we've got here is a ESP32 module that has a CAN transceiver connected it, uh, to it and various other stuff that's not important right now. Um, this board has been done by Damien and I believe originally by Pete in a much more trimmed down version and you can see um, <clears throat> yeah so this ESP board connects to the inverter board via CAN usually this would be like a twisted pair longer cable run somewhere in your car and for example this one could be connected to your OBD port um, provided the inverter CAN is actually on there and then here we have our CAN dongle to see what's going on on the PC and that's what we're going to look at now Okay, so I've uh, started it up. It uh, yeah, tries to locate an SD card, which is not important right now. And you can see here, it's uh, it's asking for the inverter serial number, where the last um, um, yeah, component here is actually a checksum over the JSON file. Well, not quite really, but sort of. Good. So it caches uh, the inverted JSON uh, that has all the parameters and spot values in it uh, locally on its file system. And in that case, it says it's already downloaded. Otherwise, it will actually download the JSON via CAN. Good. So uh, what we have here is two tabs. Um, so this tab is the actual Wi-Fi ESP8266 Wi-Fi module that's on the inverter board. And let's go change some value, it's like boost from 1000 to 2000. Set OK. And let's jump onto the CAN based one and refresh it. Yep. Seems to work. And let's change it again via CAN. And check on the local one. Yes, it's been updated. Um, likewise, we can do the plot where I can. Um, it's not going to be nearly as fast as the as the other plot because it has to ask for every individual value why I can wait for the reply. So it's only suitable for small uh, low frequency signals. But apart from that, you can see it actually works. Um, let's take a look at SavvyCAN, which I've also got running here. And you can see the CAN flying back and forth to get, yeah, get the values. So 601 is the queries by the Wi-Fi module and then 581 is um, the replies from our inverter board. Mm. Also, it might be important to note that there's a concept called node ID with the protocol we're using here. And you can see it's uh, we are asking via ID 601 and that reference is node number one. And by default, I've always set the inverter to be node number one on a can open network. Hardly anyone ever noticed because nobody, you know, hardly everyone makes use of the can open interface. And it means if we have more nodes on there, let's, let's say a Tesla charger board, a zombie verter, 
open inverted EMS, whatever, um, we have to make sure each component has its unique node ID, because otherwise we will be asking for, uh, we will just be getting faulty replies. So that works pretty nicely. Uh, likewise, we can also do firmware upgrades. Um, I can, let's just make sure we're on the can one, yeah. Um, let's flash this from, what is it now? Now it's the sign firmware, let's put the FOC firmware on there. Let's put here, here you see the update packets flying back and forth. And let's say it's equally fast as the UART based update. So the node ID management still has to be improved, like right now it always talks to node ID 1. And so we need a little field here that lets you select the node ID which you want to talk to in case you've got multiple devices on your canvas. Um, also, these buttons don't do anything right now. No reaction. Um, so that's got to be done. Um, yeah, but apart from that, the most important things already work. And I will link the GitHub project in down below. Good. That's it for today. I will make a separate video about the recent BMS progress um, later when I feel like it. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.